Hi everyone, so today uh, I'm having a play around with my back focal distance of the telescope again. As I said in a previous video, I wasn't convinced that uh, I'd set the, uh, the distance correct uh, and used the wrong reference point uh, on the telescope. Uh, so I'm taking the opportunity today just to have another play around with it and uh, this is how I've been uh, doing it. So the first thing I've done is uh, I've slewed the telescope round uh, so that I've got a reference point in the distance. So if you look through the trees uh, roughly 10 to 15 kilometres away, uh, just up in between these trees here, uh, there's some houses being built uh, up in the hillside. And so I'm using them uh, as a reference point. So I've slewed the telescope round. Uh, until uh, I can see though that area uh, in the finder scope and uh, I've used that uh, roughly uh, as my point of origin uh, for, for to check in the, the image quality. So the next thing was the telescope itself so the Edge HCD 11 has 148.05 millimeter uh, back focal distance and originally I had used the front end uh, of the, the nut here uh, as the reference point however uh, it says in the in the manual uh, and the uh, references I've seen online that you've actually got to remove everything off the front of the telescope and use the front of the, the nut uh, as the focal plane starting point. Uh, so when I put the nut back on and I've measured the distances through the inside, it's approximately four and a half to five millimeters uh, distance uh, between the front of this nut here and the focal plane uh, starting point, uh, the datum uh, inside there. So the next stop was to use a bunch of uh, these uh, extension pieces. So I had a number of them already and I had set them up uh, originally uh, based on the, on the front here, which obviously was too long. So having taken off everything I had originally, um, I messed around again with uh, another set of them, uh, messing around based on the new distance. Uh, I also know that uh, according to the manual for the camera, uh, the sensor uh, is sitting 17 and a half millimeters off the front uh, of the of the camera here so in effect I've got to make up the, the five millimeters or roughly plus the 17 and a half and make up that gap between these two faces here uh, with uh, the extension pieces the filter drawer uh, and uh, all the spacers etc so when I do that uh, I've now got uh, just measuring up here uh, I've managed to get 125 uh, millimeters there, plus the five millimeters uh, gives you the 130 and the 17 uh, and a half uh, of the, the camera gives me the roughly 148 millimeters there about, uh, which is a lot better than what I had originally because uh, I, dropped, I dropped off a 30 millimeter spacer. And, and made up the difference here uh, with a couple of smaller rings the best I can playing around with the, the different sizes until I got uh, the best part of 148 millimeters from the reference point to the sensor so then uh, having had the, the camera uh, set up there uh, I've lowered the temperature down uh, just to 5 degrees or 10 degrees or 20 degrees whatever it is in the camera it doesn't really matter for during the daytime uh, but it was just to stop the electronics getting overheated because uh, without the cooling on uh, the camera was running around about 45 degrees uh, in the current conditions. So then uh, I set up the handset uh, into focuser and uh, that allows me just to, to move the focus in and out uh, on the handset because obviously I'm using the Celestron uh, motor focuser uh, on the telescope and then it allowed me to bring in uh, the software side of it. So here, let me just pull the chair in. Here we can see uh, I've got ASI CAP set up uh, running uh, on the laptop connected to the camera uh, and the counter camera uh, connected and uh, in here is where I set the temperature. Uh, you can see I've set it for 25 degrees and it's just bouncing around to plus or minus uh, one degree on there which is fine for the daytime setup. And then just using the motor focuser and the slewing of the controls I found the buildings that were getting fabricated. Uh, up in the hillside and just adjusted the focus until uh, I can see uh, what appears to be a relatively clean um, outline of the buildings, as uh, sharp as I can get it. And uh, also looking at the trees, uh, I've moved around a couple of places, uh, everything appears to be uh, a lot more crisper 
uh, than I had previously uh, when I'd done this uh, when I first got the camera uh, a couple of weeks ago. So that was today's messing around uh, with the back focal and how to, I did it uh, during the day shift, uh, daytime, sorry. And uh, now I just have to uh, get back out again at night and uh, see how well that works. So that's it for today, just a very quick one. Uh, so again, thanks for watching. Uh, do the duty on the, on the videos, like, comment on how you do set up your daytime or any other advice you can give and uh, any questions etc and uh, please don't forget to subscribe uh, to support the channel so that's it thank you very much and we'll speak to you later